Hi, welcome to this part, part 6. We will look at AWS Proton. This playlist is helpful for both SAAC03, that is Solution Architect Associate 03, as well as Solution Architect Professional C01 and 02. 02 would be launched in October. Please hit the subscribe and the like button. Let's jump into the topic straight. So we all knew that there is a service which allows you to create infrastructure as a code that is called CloudFormation. So that means you do not have to manually create your infrastructure by hand. You can use infrastructure as a code. You can actually write the code and it will create the infrastructure for you. Now people might ask if we already have CloudFormation, why do we need Proton? If you want to manage templates from CloudFormation, we use Proton. As simple as it. But why did AWS launch this service? It is because to enable platform teams to connect, coordinate different tools. So you always know that there are two teams, platform team and developer team. What does platform team does is it will enable the platform teams to define infrastructure and deployment tools. So they are mostly related to creating infrastructure and create and you know deploying the tools so that your deployment like CI, CD, pipeline, and etc. would be proper. And the Proton would help the developer team to create a self-service from the infrastructure templates. So using, so platform team would manage, would manage the infrastructure and the deployment tools. And developer team would be the consumer who can use it in a self-service mode. So what else you can do? You can implement self-service infrastructure portals, just like we saw. Basically, Proton under the hood uses cloud formation because the templates are created using cloud formation. Proton would help you with application deployments when you have CI CD pipelines. If you have, suppose, some Spark code getting deployed on Spark clusters, you use CI CD pipelines, maybe Bamboo or some other CI CD tool. So, Proton would help you with that. It will help you track the versions and updates in a centralized solution. So, it is a centralized solution. When you created infrastructure as a code, it was not a centralized solution. Now, you are creating a centralized solution using Proton. So the admin team and the platform team can manage all the infrastructure that is getting deployed as well as the deployment tools that the software engineers will use. So it is basically trying to empower, empower, empower developers with the flexibility. So developers, instead of again and again going back to the platform team and requesting for infrastructure resources, they can do it themselves using self-service templates. Who has provisioned the self-service templates? It is being provisioned by the platform teams using Amazon Proton. Hope we got the context. Now let us understand some more details about Proton. So the best advantage here is developers don't need to write infrastructure as a code. Before Proton, what used to happen is infrastructure as a code templates are, are created and it is created in silos. Maybe the platform team has created it, but there are so many different types of teams and departments and projects using it. So it is created in silos. So Proton would help you with streamlining and centralizing those templates. You can have various templates and developers will get an opportunity to pick and choose which templates they would like to use. So just like I explained, it is they will use it in a self-service model where they can choose what, what infrastructure they need to be provisioned and deploy their projects without interacting with the underlying resources. So they don't have to create an EC2 instance themselves. It is all within the template. If they choose a template, for, for example, what does a template look like? For example, the templates might be like if you want some sort of reporting application to be deployed on a rich in-memory type of instances, then there will be a template one which will help you with you know deploying such instances which will be very good for in-memory processing of data so it might have like eight or ten ec2 instances it might have rds databases it might have some s3 buckets and so on so if you look at this diagram proton will help you with manage and update the deployments so you can create environment templates you can deploy the environments you can create service templates and who will use these? These will be used by the developers. You see this, this right hand side box, developers. So like I explained, cloud formation, you can write infrastructure as a code, or you can also use Terraform. Terraform is most widely used across different cloud platforms. It does the same thing that cloud formation does. Both these products, Terraform and cloud formation, they create infrastructure as a code in which templates, in which form, which format, JSON or YAML format. What is YAML? It is yet another markup language. Now, how is Proton different from CloudFormation? Proton is a deployment workflow tool. So it will still, under the hood, use infrastructure as a code templates, which is created using CloudFormation or Terraform. But it is a wrapper around those 
which will help you create a deployment workflow for the modern applications. The next thing that Proton can do is it will help you with patch upgrades since it is a centralized tool where you know you'll have access to all the templates. You can get to know which resources are out, to, out of date. So it will automatically recognize such resources and it will apply patch upgrades or update them. Now Proton, it includes a collection of open source templates which can be used as a starting point to define your architecture with infrastructure as a code tool. So what it means is you don't have to write anything from scratch. They already have a predefined set of code. You can use this as a template and build on top of it. And remember, it is an open source template. That means YAML or JSON. It will work with uh, Google Cloud. It will work with Azure Cloud and so on. So how you can start? You can start by taking the existing infrastructure as a code file and update it, define some input parameters. That is how you can build on top of it. See, if you create your own template, you can save it in Amazon S3 bucket and register it in AWS Proton. Once you register it, Proton will read the template from the bucket and it will register it in the console from where you can test the bucket, publish it to the developers and update it as needed. So that means you have created a bucket, you have registered it in Proton so that Proton can centrally uh, manage it and release it to the developers for usage purpose. Always remember, developers are the consumers and platform team are the one which will manage AWS Proton resources. So these are some of the key features. Before we end this video, we should have a look at it. First is automated deployments. Primarily, it helps you create application stack templates. So these are how you can create the stack templates. And it will also include the CICD pipeline, which will be made available to the developers so that they can deploy infrastructure for an application they make a request for. Now, you can manage customer managed environments. For example, you have a private cloud. You can bring that into Proton. And the deployment can work in the same way. It, it has flexible definitions, but that means you can create service templates with or without a pipeline. Okay. And you can leverage AWS Proton's central management capabilities to ensure all deployments are up to date. Now, Proton also provides the flexibility for the developers. They can create a component by providing the infrastructure as a code template and then associate the component with their service. So they are actually extending the support of a single template that Proton was providing. And the most important thing is self-service interface so that the developers can use management console or CLI and operate or reuse Proton templates. The updates are streamlined. That means Proton would support versioning of the infrastructure templates. For example, you have infrastructure templates and you have created four or five versions of it. It will maintain all of those versions so that uh, you will know which versions were deployed in which environments at what time. And it provides the developers with updates of out of date deployments. In case there are certain deployments, suppose you are a developer and you have used certain test set of templates coming in from Proton. And suppose an EC2 instance, there are a couple of EC2 instances and they are out of date. So you will come to know that these are out of date and it can be updated centrally through Proton. You as a developer don't have to worry about being up to date. So the tagging is one of the key features. So the provision resources are automatically tagged with unique identifiers. So you all remember what is the use case of tagging? We use tagging for cost management, cost management. And that's why we use tag-based access control and tag-based cost management. These are the two main uses of tagging. And then we have a centralized template management for whom? For platform engineers. They can use Proton to create a stack that is stored and managed in Proton as a reusable version controlled template. I hope you all were able to understand AWS Proton. The questions for this topic will come related to whatever I ex have explained in this video. Now, they would present various use cases where you will have to apply these concepts. This is important for both Solution Architect Associate as well as Solution Architect Professional Certification Exam. This brings us to the end of this part. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Subscriptions matter a lot. We had a look at AWS Proton concepts. See you in the next part.